Welcome to Daz Geek. Now, look, I'm going to blame the Destination Linux Telegram group, which you're not a part of. You should be because they're the ones who made me spend several days geeking out over this. And yes, this is several days worth of work for me. You master coders can laugh all you want. But what we've done here is we've taken all of my love for XFCE and all of my love for i3, and we've combined them into a desktop environment. So for those who don't know, i3 is a window manager. It's really not meant specifically to be a desktop environment, but it's super light and it's very flexible, meaning you can panel and tile your windows and create shortcuts and everything all through a single text config file to where you can have all these programs execute as soon as you log in and open into individual workspaces and open in configurations that you want tiled onto your screens, making a super productive workflow. If you're doing video recording, even gaming and things works very well with an i3. Now, XFCE is a fantastic desktop environment. I love everything about it. Sometimes I feel lazy and I want to just use the mouse. So I wanted to create an XFCE i3 hybrid. I am not the first one to do this, but this one's mine. So it's the greatest to me anyways. Uh, and what we've done is we've taken the XFCE4 panel in the whisker menu in these things, and we have created this i3 hybrid. So... I wanted to make this easy enough because when I started playing with i3 again and this particular setup using the XFCE panels with i3, I really dug it. I loved it and I wanted it on all my machines. So the natural thing is I have installer scripts out there, this little GUI here that you can go into each time once you run it, download it and run it and it will update your system and gives you a bunch of programs that you can install here. And so if you're on a brand new distro setup, machine setup, you can just go here, select all the packages you want and hit OK. And it's going to go auto install them for you. So I wanted to create an i3 window manager auto install option within that GUI, which I'll show you guys all of this makes sense here more in a second. So that every time I go to a machine, I could check this, whether it's Ubuntu based or Fedora based. So those are the two I made it for now but you are welcome to fork it and change all the code that you want. You're welcome to go in there and contribute to this code. It is out there on GitHub. So go to dosgeekcommunity.com, go to tools here, and you'll see the Ubuntu auto installer, the Fedora auto installer, and then the i3 config by itself. But if you want it to automatically do all of this setup for you, you can just utilize this uh, installer, whether you're using Fedora or an Ubuntu base, check this, click OK, and it will do the installation for you. But it's very much in beta and very much if you have experience in this stuff and know how to do different setups and configurations, welcome your input and changes within GitHub there. So you could go to the Fedora script and contribute code to it. But essentially, all you do is you download this package then you're going to go into your file manager. You're going to extract the package. So if I go to downloads here, uh, you would have the zip. You could open with your archive manager and then you could extract that package. It's going to give you a folder like this. You just need this install script, Fedora or Ubuntu. You're going to do properties, permissions, allow executing file as a program and boom. Then you can take this and move it into your documents or anything else and run it. You can run it right from there if you wanted to within your terminal. Very, very simple to use. So once you have it in place, let me just cancel this out here to kind of show you. Once you have it in place, you're just going to do this, you know, navigate to whatever file you're at, sudo dot slash install script Fedora. It's going to run updates for your machine. So if your machine hasn't been updated, you might have to wait a while while it does the updates and you got to use your correct sudo password. So it's going to do update and upgrading. Uh, if you haven't done that, like I said, it will take a little bit, but otherwise for most normal human beings, it will pop up to a GUI interface here momentarily. There it goes. Okay, finally kicks off. And then you could, of course, install i3wm. So what is it installing to get this? So I will show you my terrible code here. So this is the installer script. And basically this creates a menus for all the programs we install. So if we go under tweaks here, we can see what it's actually doing. It's installing all of these normal parts of i3, Fay, X Backlight, Conky, etc. It's installing all of these XFCE notifiers 
and pulse plugins. And I think I already see a repeat in here because that's what I do. Uh, and exit, but it's not going to like install it twice. It's just going to say it's already installed if it does it. So no big deal. Uh, mount plugins and stuff there. It's going to install Compton and Unclutter. Unclutter hide your mouse when it's not in use. LX appearance and menu libre. So you can customize menus and change some theming and stuff. It's basically going to find who actually executed sudo because it's going to need to move files for you because it's going to create a Compton file uh, and, and basically create a location by touching it to create a location to store the Compton file. It's going to do make a directory for your i3 file and it's going to pull out the wallpaper here. You can see through the transparency, which gives you some quick hit keys, uh, kind of like a quick start guide for what keys do what within i3 because everything is done through the keyboard in i3. Uh, so it's going to pull down the wallpaper. It's going to uh, pull down some of the configuration, Compton configuration file there. It's going to get the XFCE zip file so that it can basically give you a setup like this where you have some of the widgets and things pre-installed. So it looks like mine, essentially. And it's going to unzip that file. I have it asking for the user again because I don't know what the timeout is on that. Uh, so I'm probably asking for the user too much, like who's the user who launched sudo. But in any case, basically it moves that to the home of the person who launched sudo into the XFC4 backup file. So now it's putting those configurations in place. Well, in this case, it's actually moving the standard XFCE config file to a XFCE backup. So you don't lose it in case you don't like my configuration, want to go back to standard. Uh, you would have it there as the backup. Then it's going to move the new config file in place. So it's going to move that new config. It's going to move the new Compton file in place as well here. Uh, it's going to move the wallpaper into place where Faye can pick it up. And then it's going to move your i3 configuration file in place. So that's, and then it's going to change the ownership of it to the user who launched sudo so that root doesn't own all of these files so you can edit them. And that's basically how the install script works for automatically installing i3wm. Welcome to go in there and help clean up the code and make it even better, but it works pretty well. Works pretty well. So in the config itself, this is i3. This is i3 in a nutshell. Everything can be done from this config file and it looks crazy to you probably at first if you've never seen one, but i3 config files are really easy uh, actually once you learn them. So all of these uh, pounds here or hashtags, whatever you want to call it, are basically comments. So they don't actually do anything. If you remove that hashtag, it would try to execute it. But that hashtag in front of it is where you can put text and explain things. So it's telling you, hey, these are mod one equals alt key, control key, uh, shift, is shift key, escape is escape key, return. You know, it's just basically giving you some definitions to remember. When you see the mod key, it's Windows key or super key, whatever you call it. So the Windows key on your keyboard, because everything in i3 is about keyboard shortcuts there. Starting D menu. So if we do the super key D, you can see that menu pops up. This is what most people use to launch programs. You type in what you want and launch it. But of course, you can use the whisker menu here in this case as well if you want and you're feeling lazy and don't want to do the key alternatives. These are ways to move windows around so we can switch windows, we can move them horizontally, we can do all kinds of crazy things in i3. Really simply, that's what makes it beautiful. We assign our workspaces 1 through 10. We give some ability to switch to those using the um, super key and 1 through 0. So I can switch to any workspace I want just doing that which is very, very cool and effective uh, to getting to the workspaces that you want. Here we set up our monitors and you can type in xrander in your terminal to get a list of your particular monitors and the connection types that you have. And then you can change them here. Or if you have ones that match these, you can uncomment these and then comment these back by just using that hashtag, right? Uh, and these talk about which workspaces appear on which monitor. So you can have different workspaces appear if you have multiple monitors on different monitors. Uh, we have brightness controls and everything. So this works on my Dell XPS laptop. So I've got the controls and everything working to lower volume, change screen, brightness, all of that done within this configuration file as well. So it works on mobile devices. And this is the one you'll probably be most interested in at first because this is auto executing programs. So it's gonna execute Faye and it's gonna load this wallpaper, which it downloaded and moved into the right area under pictures for you automatically if you use the install script, which is pretty cool. 
Uh, but if you don't want to use that wallpaper anymore, you would just put a different path to where your wallpaper is. Maybe you have something, you know, linux.png. So you just change this part to linux.png as long as the files and pictures. Uh, this is going to launch the XFCE4 panel up here. It's going to launch Compton, which helps with screen tearing. It's going to execute Nautilus because I built this on a GNOME base. So why install yet another file manager? Nautilus works fine. So it's going to execute Nautilus. And then this assign class says move it to workspace two. So every time Nautilus gets executed at the beginning, when I log in, it's going to move, it's going to open Nautilus. It's going to put it in workspace two. It's going to open sublime text. It's going to move it to workspace six. It's going to execute Firefox, move it to workspace one. It's going to execute the GNOME terminal, move it to workspace one. Simple note in workspace three, telegram. It's going to, this is executing the program. This is assigning it to a workspace. So very simple, simple way of basically getting all your programs to open that you want in the right workspaces as soon as you log in, allowing you maximum efficiency. This creates floating or tiling. So if you want certain windows, certain prompts and pop-ups to be a floating window, by default, instead of tiling it, some look better in floating or only work in floating, then you can set parameters here for that role. You can also float windows yourself here. Like you can make any windows float. Like I just made the terminal floaty now so you can move it around. It's not tiled, but it's really not what I3 is meant for. It's meant for tiling. So certain things need to be floated, but in general, you don't want to use float. You don't want to float all your windows and type of things, which you may be used to. Everything gets done through the keyboard shortcuts. It will take time for you to learn that, but this is a really fun way because the install script does a lot of the work for you and installing all of these different programs and getting you a nice configuration. And it gives you a nice lazy configuration where you can even switch workspaces and things here. And as you move away from Windows, like now it's focused on my OBS because I clicked it over here, which you guys can't see, but you can see that it makes all the other windows that aren't active transparent. So that's a really cool thing as well. So some of this is Eric Dubois code for Arco Linux. If you want to be even simpler, you could just go install Arco Linux if you want. And his i3 variations, he's probably one of the best i3 prodigies out there for config files, I think. Has some amazing stuff. A lot of people have amazing things out there. But i3 itself is just an amazing, uh, amazing program. And it's super fun to play with. You can even, you know, hit the F key here and make things full screen. We can, of course, change our focus points and we can watch a little bit of Destination what? Linux with Matthew Miller of Fedora here, which we had on. By the way, if you want to get more DOS Geek stuff, check out Destination Linux because I am one of the hosts there. We also have Michael and Zeb, which are just brilliant minds, awesome people to hang out with. So check that out, a podcast or YouTube you can do there. Check out the install script. Help out if you want, if you want to get involved and make it even better. There's a lot of tweaks and things that I still need to do to make it more effective, not repeat certain things and in installs and just make it better code. But it's something I play with and have fun with. So get out there and play with it and enjoy it. That's my current i3 setup. I did it in Ubuntu Mate and I've used it in Fedora 28 GNOME and it works fine on both the desktop and laptop working great right now so leave it in the comments below if you try it out if it breaks something don't hold me responsible for it so do it on some hardware you're not afraid to uh potentially mess up but i mean it's not really doing anything that spectacular so it really shouldn't break anything but in any case that's my video i hope you enjoy it. it's what i've been working on until next time get out there and fill your brains don't forget to subscribe.